Hey guys, Beast and I are back, and today we've got a three-way shoe shootout between the New Balance Fuel Cell TC, the Hoka Oni Oni Carbon X, and the Nike Pegasus Turbo 2. What do you reckon, Beast? Which is your favourite? If you're new to the channel, or you've just stumbled in here with bleary eyes and wondering what on earth's going on, welcome. Here I specialise in running shoe and gear reviews, and I also document my training, and sometimes the occasional daily vlog, to try and keep you guys busy during the old COVID lockdown. Please hit that subscribe button, and click the bell down below for notifications of when new videos are launched. I certainly would appreciate it if you give the video a like as well. Right, let's get to it. So as I say, a three-way shootout today between three high-end racing shoes, all towards the heavier end of the £100 price tag. The most expensive here today being the New Balance Fuel Cell TC, and the least expensive right now, from where I've been looking at prices earlier, is the Pegasus Turbo 2. Although it varies quite a bit with that shoe. Here's a few stats for you from all three shoes. These all fit into the faster paced shoe category, and as such provide a tantalising opportunity for a classic Ed Budge shoe shootout. It's actually very difficult to say that. Let's start off with the upper of each shoe. So the Pegasus Turbo 2 here, I picked this one up right on launch last year. Synthetic mesh makes up the upper of the Pegasus Turbo 2, and you've got a neoprene type tongue. It's very odd. It's an odd feel. Some may like it, some might not. If you're into wetsuits, you'll probably like it. No fly wires on this version of the shoe. On the previous version, they had those fly wires, but they dispense with them this time. I didn't really miss them that much. I quite like the lacing system on the Pegasus Turbo 2. Loads and loads of room in the toe box here. Some people found the upper actually to be a little bit too flexible. I'm not really feeling a little bit too flexible right now. I foolishly decided to carry my Vox AC15 amplifier down the stairs and I've done my back in. It's a bit better today in honesty, I've just been standing up and trying to learn some new stuff on the computer in terms of live streaming. But yeah, I'm certainly not as flexible as the upper on the Turbo 2. Not right now anyway. I had no issues with the tongue slipping down, I did read a few reviews here and there where people had some major issues with it sliding around, just kind of works for me this shoe. The heel collars positioned away from the Achilles there, had no rubbing issues there whatsoever. And I didn't get any of the dreaded separation between the React and the Zoom X either. Maybe I just got lucky. I did win a bottle of whiskey once in a raffle. That's the only thing I've ever won. I found it excellent in terms of comfort and lockdown, but not all runners had my opinion on the upper. I think you can safely say that all runners have got a different opinion on shoes, where they want them to feel. I certainly thought this was a great shoe though, and worth pretty much every pound I spent on it. The Hoka Oni Oni Carbon X. This shoe always reminds me of a very specific training route that I can run near my parents. Well, I can't run it now. It's not somewhere I can go right now due to the COVID lockdown, but it always reminds me of that specific seven mile route. It's lots of farmland there, there is country tracks, very thin, one lane kind of stuff. Some mud, some rocks, some pigs, horses. You occasionally see a pheasant out there as well. Anyway, I digress. I need to get back to what I'm supposed to be talking about here. This is one of those shoes where you need to loosen it off before you can actually get your foot into it. The actual lacing system there demands it. The upper's certainly soft, it's very light. Certainly breathable too. It's got almost like a sort of satin feel about it. You can imagine someone perhaps making ribbons from the upper. But you've got to make sure you get lockdown spot on with this shoe because it's so rigid in the midfoot. Any slight looseness in the lacing and you've got big problems. The shoe will sort of slap around a bit on your foot. It just, it won't be a nice experience. You've got these stitched kind of overlays here in the heel to provide a little bit more rigidity, provide a bit more support. There's no heel counter here at all though. It is literally just flexible material all the way. I find fantastic lockdown though in the Fuel Cell TC. I believe out of these three shoes, it's got the best overall upper fit and sizing for my foot. I did go up half a size here. I find I've got great room then up front in the toe box. Really great breathability in some warm conditions that we've had here in the UK of recent time. But there's also some reasonable structure here, which I feel perhaps the other two shoes in this shootout suffer from a lack of. I really like the suede around the heel area as well. Feels a little bit plush, hey? We all want a little bit of luxury every now and then. I think certainly the most premium of the three shoes in the shootout today, and I'm gonna give the upper award to the Fuel Cell TC. Mmm, that feels good. On to midsole next. So the Turbo's got two materials here, Zoom X 
and react. After 100 miles, still feels really great on foot, this one. I really do want to try and utilize it again. Maybe get this one up to a couple of hundred miles for another review. I've used these in a variety of different training activities. It's certainly a Swiss Army shoe, very versatile. It's pacey when it needs to be, but also forgiving when you pull down the pace as well. I find this shoe's a little bit like the Dutch international football team of the 90s. It really is very versatile. It can kind of play in almost every position. I even remember using this on a club run where we went across some fields, through some tracks, lots of debris, lots of twigs, some mud. It worked well then as well. Midsole always left me feeling very comfortable. That Zoom X and React in the midsole is a really great combo. It's the sort of combo that you would see in a restaurant. You pick it out and say, oh yeah, I'll take that one, please, waiter. The EVA in the Hoka Onioni Carbon X is called ProFly X. You, you've got to have X at the end of everything now. That's the special character you have to have. You have to put X. I think I'm losing it. I've got to be honest, I found the ProFly X stuff a little firm. It did mellow out after a little while, but always felt quite a firm ride to me. Maybe I got a defective shoe or something. Everyone else seems to say it's really forgiving. It's really soft. I, I didn't find that at all. I don't think I was ever really enamored with the midsole material in the Hoka Oni Oni Carbon X. Maybe it's that Y-shaped carbon plate, I don't know. But this is a midsole that's just yet to deliver for me. There's still time, I'm not discounting it just yet. I think perhaps the midsole material is probably why this shoe's a little bit more comparable in terms of weight with the Fuel Cell TC. Pretty much all of the weight really is in the midsole. The upper is actually very, very light. The Fuel Cell TC midsole it has more in common, really, with the Zoom X in the Pegasus Turbo 2. Fuel Cell really is rapidly becoming one of my favourite midsole materials. It's absolutely fantastic in the Fuel Cell Rebel, and more of it here does result in a very soft and forgiving ride, but at the expense of more weight. There is a carbon plate in the midsole here of the Fuel Cell TC. It does appear to be more curved in terms of shape than the one used in the Vaporfly 4% Flyknit, or the next percent. It's certainly different to the one that's used in the Carbon X. I think I've preferred the TC and the Pegasus Turbo 2 in terms of midsole. Softer, more responsive, and more forgiving. I'd argue that those shoes always left my legs feeling great the next day, and not so much with the Carbon X. So it's gonna be a draw this round to the Fuel Cell TC and the Pegasus Turbo 2. On to outsoles now. So. I think we're at about 130 miles in the Pegasus Turbo 2 here. And the outsole itself is holding up really, really well. Very little wear in the midfoot area there. There's a tiny bit of wear on toe off. Almost no wear at the back of the shoe. I have seen people wear this shoe down though if they have a more aggressive heel strike. I'm mainly a midfoot striker. Certainly when you see some of my running footage, sometimes I'm going to slow down a little bit to get some reasonably stable footage for you. But when I do increase the pace, I'm certainly landing on my midfoot. So do beware, if you are a heel striker, this shoe may not work out that well for you. The Hoka Oni Oni Carbon X has a midsole outsole. It's kind of both things, really. There isn't an end to either one. It's kind of got this full length exposed midsole, I guess, which doubles up as the outsole. There's a little wear over the outsole here. There is a little bit on the edge of the heel here but it's held up pretty well overall. I have to say though, this shoe is pretty much useless on grass. I didn't really enjoy it that much in wet weather. The Fuel Cell TC has a more next percent style outsole. You got this rubber traction area here and then some rubber strips that are slightly more curved than those on the next percent back here in the heel. Even after about 20 odd miles, there's a little bit of wear already here in the rubber area. In the midfoot area here, the actual pattern's slightly different. There are slightly larger holes cut out of it. And then they get smaller as you get to the edges of the outsole. Only time's gonna tell really if this one's gonna hold up as well as the other two shoes. I'm gonna try my very best, once my back's better, to get out and put some more miles into this one. I did find it a little bit slippery on some grass areas. There was some very wet, dewy grass and it's very slippery on those. I've gotta say though, tried and tested, I think the best outsole awards Got to go to the Pegasus Turbo 2. I did use this one in a race back in October. It was incredibly windy and wet, and this shoe did me proud. Even going up some very wet uh, ascents and descents from a hill out in Dorchester for the Dorchester Dash 10K race. I just think the Pegasus Turbo 2's got the best versatility in terms of the outsole. Just really, really works for me in all sorts of different conditions. Hey, in a shootout, you've got to have 
an award for aesthetics as well. Your running shoes gotta look good. The only downfall of the Pegasus Turbo 2 is the fact that the toe box bunches up a little bit just here. It's quite off-putting to me that. Other than that, I think the shoe looks great. Certainly a space age vibe about it. I love the splash of lemon here in the heel with the pull tab, the satin finish. And I think it's got a really great shape, this shoe. It looks like something that astronauts might wear, maybe when they're doing their training. But the TC, well, it's just something awesome about this shoe. I really do like the cutaway sections here of the suede, the flare of the heel, and the snowy, frosty upper with the hit of blue on the outsole. I like the shape of the midsole here as well, at the back in the heel. And the pinstripe laces, does not forget those. So I think in terms of aesthetics, the award goes to the Fuel Cell TC. A quick musical interlude for you. I've been listening to this great album by Beck. It's from the late 90s and it's called Midnight Vultures. There's some fantastic tracks on here. Mixed Business is a real winner too. Milk and Honey and The Pressure Zone as well, all fantastic tunes. Beck was really experimenting with using more samples and loads and loads of real world instruments too on this one. A very Prince sounding album. There's a great ballad at the end as well called Deborah as well where Beck really shows off his fantastic voice. So do check this one out from the very late 90s, Beck with Midnight Vultures. I hope you've enjoyed the shootout today guys. Thanks for watching through to the end. If you haven't done so already, you can follow me over on Instagram. I'll throw some information up on the screen for you. You can also follow me on Strava as I document my training towards uh, when there are some more races. Please hit the subscribe button if you haven't done so already and click the bell for notifications of when my new videos are launched. Please give the video a like and comment below with your questions. You know I love your questions. Please share this video with your running buddies and spread the good word. My name's Ed Bud and I'll be seeing you.